Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be doing every question that has ever been asked about trigonometry, but more specifically about half AB sine C. Now, half AB sine C does pop up in some other places, and it also pops up in some of these kind of mixed problems as well. So I'm just going to focus on five questions that are just about half AB sine C. Now, if you want to use this document, it's fully hyperlinked and it is linked in the description. So let's have a quick look at this first one here. It says the diagram shows a circle and an equilateral triangle. One side of the equilateral triangle is a diameter of the circle, and the circle has circumference 44 centimetres. Work out the area of the triangle. Well, one of the things that I know here is that it is an equilateral, so I know all of the angles are going to be 60 degrees. And they've told us about the circumference of the circle. So circumference is pi times the diameter. If I find out the diameter, I found out the side of an equilateral triangle. So the circumference is 44 and that is pi multiplied by the diameter. If I want to find out what the diameter is, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by pi. So let's type that on my calculator. Let's find out what 44 divided by pi is. 44 divided by pi, that is going to be 14.00. Let's just say it's 14 centimeters that we've got there. Now this means on my triangle that this is 14 centimeters, this is 14 centimetres, and this is also 14 centimetres. So when you want to use the half AB sine C formula, you literally just need to have a side, which is A and B, and you need to have an angle between them, which we call C. And we've got that here because we have got a side, a side, and an angle in between them. So we can use that to find out the area of the triangle. The area of the triangle, which is going to be our half AB sine C, is going to be a half times 14 times 14, those are the two sides, multiplied by sine 60, which is in the middle, and we're going to give that to three significant figures. So I'm going to do a half, I can write it as a fraction, times 14 times 14 times the sine of 60, and to three significant figures, that is 84.9. So we get 84.9 centimetres squared. Let's see how we did. There's the 84.9, and you can see what the method is looking like here. It's kind of similar to ours. They did some other approaches, but I think our half AB sine C method is the best one. Second one we've got. The diagram shows a rectangle ABDE of two congruent, meaning they're exactly the same, two congruent triangles we've got here. The area of rectangle ABDE is the area of triangle AFE plus the area of triangle BCD. And it says that AB to AE is 1 to 3. So this ratio of AB to AE is 1 to 3 that we've got here. And we want to work out the length of AE. So there's definitely something to do with these areas that we've got going on. Well, I think that we might want to try and use the fact that the two triangles areas come up to this one. So I'm going to see if we can find out uh, what AE is. I'll tell you what, let's label AE. Let's label that X and let's label that one x as well. So if I do the area of triangle ABD, we've also got that AB and AE are in ratio one to three. So whatever this one is, this one is three times shorter. Rather than naming it x, I might then carefully name this one three x and this one x. So then AB, AE is in that correct ratio. Yeah, I think that's probably a better way of us doing this one. So now I can say that the area of rectangle ABDE, the area of that is going to be 3x multiplied by x. That's going to be equal to the area of this triangle plus the area of this triangle, and they're the same as each other. So it's going to be a half times A, which is 3x, times B, times the sine of 30. And there's literally going to be two of those, so I'm going to multiply it by two because there's two triangles. So the left-hand side is 3x squared, and the right-hand side is going to be, well, first of all, I can do a little bit of cancelling because this half and this two will cancel. So all I'm going to type in the calculator is the 3 times the 24 times the sine 30. So 3 times 24 times sine 30, and we get the answer 36. So I get the answer 36x. Okay, I'm now going to divide both sides by 3 so that x squared is equal to 12x. I'm then going to divide both sides by x so that I get x is equal to 12. Now that I know that x is equal to 12, I think I can go back to the diagram. This is 12. This is 3 times 12, so it's 36. So what the question says is work out the length of AE 
the length of AE is therefore equal to 36 centimetres. Let's see if we got this one right. Yep, there is the 36. Quite a bit of tricky problem solving there. I think the ratio part is probably the thing we want to label straight away with algebra. And then we said the area of the square was the area of two triangles. I might just annotate here. We times it by two because the triangles are the same. The triangles are the same. Not that you would need to write that when you're doing it, but just so you've got that in your notes if you're looking at this. Okay, this one is a very simple one. We just want to find out the area of this triangle and it's just an application of a half AB sine C. So we're going to do those two with the angle in between. So the area is going to be equal to a half times eight times 11 times the sine of the angle in between. Just get it on the calculator. So that's a half times eight times 11 times the sine of 72. And to three significant figures, that is 41.8 centimeters squared. Let's see if we've got this. Yep, there's the 41.8, so we can move on to the next one. Okay, this time we have got, it says ONQ, ONQ is a sector of a circle with center O and radius 11. Oh, that's important to know. We know that from here to here is 11 centimeters. A is the point on ON and B is the point on OQ, such that AOB is an equilateral triangle of side seven. Okay, so this is seven. And if it's an equilateral triangle, that must be 60 degrees. And this is also seven that we've got over here. Calculate the area of the shaded region as a percentage of the area of the sector ONQ. So what we're gonna to want to do at the end is we're gonna to want to do the shaded as a proportion of the sector. So we need to find out all of these different parts. First of all, I'm gonna find out the area of the triangle and I'm gonna use a half AB sine C for that. So my half AB sine C is gonna be a half times the seven, the seven, and the sine of the angle in between. That angle is 60 degrees. So let's get that on our calculator and see how we do. So we're going to do a half of times seven times seven times sine 60 and we've got 21.2176, blah, blah, blah. Now what I'm going to do is find out the area of the sector. Well, the sector that we've got is 60 degrees. Now, 60 degrees is a sixth of a circle. If you weren't sure about that, you could just do this instead. You could say that it's 60 out of 360. It is this fraction of the circle of the whole area. And because the radius is 11 centimeters, we're going to do pi times the radius squared. So I'll do that on the calculator. Let's slide it over here. So I'm going to do the 60 over 360. That's the sixth of the circle that we've got there. And I'm going to do that multiplied by pi. And I'm going to also multiply it by the radius squared. And as a decimal, we're going to say that it is 63.355. So that is 63.355. So we can just go straight into doing this shaded divided by the sector. Well, the shaded area is the sector, which is 63.355. We're gonna remove the triangle that we've got there, and then we're gonna divide that by the sector area, which is 63.355. The reason we subtracted the triangle is because we wanted to get that white area, we wanted to remove it, which is why we subtracted it. And because it wants it as a percentage, afterwards I'm just gonna get that answer and I'm gonna multiply it by 100. So I've already got that stored as the answer. So I'm going to do the answer minus 21.2176 divided by the answer. So that is 0 0.66, 0 0.665, 0 0.6651. And I'm going to times that by 100, so it's a percentage. So that is going to be 66.5%. And that's 66.5% to one decimal place there. Yep, there is the 66.5 that we've got. Okay, I think this is the last one before I start doing the sign rule. Yes, it is. Let's put the calculator over here. This one sort of blends it with some algebra. So it blends it with quadratic equations. It says that the area of the triangle ABC is six root two, and we've got that classic kind of setup of a side, a side, and an angle in between, which means we're gonna do our half AB sine C. So we're gonna calculate the value of X and we're gonna give our answer to three significant figures. This is a big clue with the three significant figures here that we might want to use the quadratic formula. That's gonna be a big clue that we might want to use that. So the area of the triangle is going to be X plus three 
sorry, a half, a, b, sine, c, that's a half, a, I'm now going to do b, which is the other side, and I'm now going to do the sine of 45, and that is equal to 6 root 2. So on my calculator, I'm going to do the 6 root 2, let's, first of all, do a half times the sine 45, let's do that on the calculator. Let's do the half multiplied by the sine 45, let's get that as a decimal. So my calculator does it as 1 over 2 root 2, but your calculator would give it as uh, root 2 over 4. But I might just do this a different way. Let's do sine 45. Let's do this a different way. I'm going to double both sides because I don't like the way my calculator doesn't do thirds in the same way as yours. So I'm going to double both sides so that I get 12 root 2. And I'm also going to divide by sine 45. So what I did, I doubled the 6 root 2 to get 12 root 2. And I'm going to get rid of the sine 45 by dividing by sine 45. So doing it the way that I wanted to, so it will match what your calculator does rather than my strange one on my iPad. I'm going to do 12 root 2 over sine 45. And we get the answer 24. So we now have that x plus 3, 2x minus 1, is equal to 24. I just want to solve this quadratic now, so I'm going to expand the brackets on the left-hand side. I'm going to have the x times 2x, which is 2x squared, the x times minus 1, which is minus x, the 3 times 2x, which is 6x, and the 3 times minus 1, which is minus 3, and that's equal to 24. Because it's a quadratic, I'm going to get everything onto one side. Minus x plus 6x, that is 5x, and then I've also got the minus 3, subtract 24, which is minus 27. Now, I think this is a good case for using the quadratic formula because it's not going to factorise if they're saying that they want it to three significant figures. Now, the quadratic formula is x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And at the time of recording, you are given this formula, um, and that's sort of as a bit of a compensation for the hardship that you've gone through for COVID. So we have that a is 2, b is 5, and c is minus 27, and we're going to go in with the formula that we've got here. So x is going to be equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared. If you want, you can type it in as b squared. And then when you do the minus 4ac, I do minus 4, and I literally just put them in brackets like this, and just get that all typed in. And that's going to be divided by 2 times a, which is 2 times 2. So let's see what the answers are that we get, and we'll see if we can if there's going to be two answers or one answer. So I'm going to do minus 5 plus, to begin with, the square root of 5 squared minus 4 brackets 2 brackets minus 27, all over 2 times 2. And I'm going to press the SD button here. The first one it's giving me is 2.6. What did it want to do? Three significant figures. So that is 2.63. Or, I'm going to go back through the calculation, I'm going to change it from the plus to the minus, and we'll see what we get. Or we get minus 5.13. But this minus 5.13 isn't going to make any sense, because how could we have a negative length over here? So in this case, if you plus 3 to it, you still get a negative length. So this one gives negative length which is not going to be very sensible, so I'm going to draw a line through that one. So my answer is that x is 2.63, and there is my 2.63. So that's all the stuff that's been asked about just half a, b, sine, c, without any of the other sine rule or cosine rule. In the upcoming videos, there is going to be all of the problems to do with sine rule, cosine rule, and when they blend them all together into those very tough questions. If you like this video, please do drop it a like, consider subscribing to my channel, and wishing you the best of luck with all your studies.